everybody. Today we're going to be talking about interior architecture. This is commonly used in uh, scenarios where you're setting up a lot of web servers and applications and databases that are being hosted um, in an uh, environment where you're serving public through a web interface, but you're also storing data like credit cards, passwords, usernames, and all that fun stuff. Go ahead. So, um, like, in websites or where? So, that's why it's called N tier, because there's different tiers serving different purposes. So we have a web tier right here. Mm -hmm. That's where the web servers are. This is where all the web pages that you see reside. Then you have application tier. This is where all the processing happens. You typing in a username and password, it's not getting stored here. It's not getting processed here. It's getting processed here. But your password and username is not getting stored here or here. <laughs> it's actually getting stored somewhere over here in and some sort of databases. Okay. Each one of these is secured by firewalls, sometimes multiple firewalls. And each one of them has rules to who's allowed to get where. So, a Joe comes in requesting a web page. He goes to a firewall that decides, am, am I going to allow Joe to request the web page? It goes to a, a proxy server. Proxy server is like a broker. It's going to decide where I send this request to. So that request comes in. Proxy server goes, hey, that looks good. There's no SQL injections or somebody's not trying to hack. So it sends it over to another firewall. Now the firewall looks at it, oh, it's a proxy server sending me the request. I authorize it. I'm going to send it ahead. So it goes to a web server. Now web server goes, oh, what are you looking for? You know, based on the request from Joe over here, is it facebook.com slash login? that PHP or whatever. And it returns that back this way, this way, and back to wherever Joe is. Huh. So Joe got a copy of this page that is the login page for Facebook in this case. Okay. So Joe is seeing this page that was sitting somewhere here on his computer. So nothing in the first stage involved those last two? Nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing. And so the web server just, so what is it the fake proxy server? So we're sending stuff to the firewall. Um, that's where this firewall only going to accept traffic from this proxy server. Can you disguise something yes. as that proxy server? There's possibilities. But it's, it's. But the thing is, it, it depends. I can say my web servers only going to listen to a request that comes from here. Everything else is just going to get dropped. So if you set up your own fake proxy server somewhere, trying to get to this server, you're never going to get there. Because first of all, my web server is not listening to this proxy server that you set up somewhere. My firewall is not listening to it. It's just going to ignore it. In the firewall terms, we use the term drop the packets. It's just, just going to drop. It's not even going to tell you that I'm denying it. It's just going to drop. So now that you got the, the web page, this login.page on your screen over here, mm -hmm. so you, you type in your username, your password, and you click submit. The request comes in, goes through the same channel, and gets over here. And now the web server is smart enough that it says, oh, you're submitting information to me. You're submitting a combination of user ID and password. And you want me to figure out if that is correct. So the web server takes that data that was inside those forms, not the whole page, just the data that is inside the user ID field and the password field, bundles it into a packet 
and sends it out the firewall this way so to an application server. The web server can't just send it straight to that firewall. It has to go through that firewall twice. There's a reason. What if that data was bad? If somebody did a SQL injection and typed a lot of gibberish in there. You don't want to send it this way. You just want to drop it right there. Oh. So you send it over to the application layer. The application layer takes that user ID and password. And formats into, into a way that the databases can understand. Now my app servers only listen to requests that come from here. So this firewall is only allowing people or requests coming from these web servers. Nobody else can talk to these at all. These are not visible to Joe and everybody so, else. But can't someone get into it internally? Like at internally, yes. At the server station. Yes, but that's why you have physical security. You have security guards. You have <laughs> fences around the buildings. Most data centers have brick walls, not windows. There's a reason for that. Right? Because you don't want somebody just walk in and take out the hard drives. So, <clears throat> now that we know what the, you know, the user ID and password is, the application bundles it up into another request that goes out the firewall onto a database server. Now, there's another firewall. It, it's inspecting who's ascending. This firewall only accepts traffic from the app server. So, it's kind of like the same thing over here, just over there. Yes. Because this is the most valuable portion. Yeah, it's got all the stuff. This can have usernames, passwords, credit cards, your mom's name, your father's name, your, you can imagine your anything, your card. social security <laughs> number. It's all in here. Now, this can be multiple. This can be further, uh, another end tier inside this. So, I, what if there's two databases? One for credit cards, that stuff, one exactly. for passwords. Does, it, does the firewall do that So, this is where the app tier comes into play. App tier bundles the package, the requests that are going to go to the database, into a way that it tells it, hey, I'm going to send you the username and password, and you just tell me yes or no. That's all you have to do. So when the request goes from app to database, all it's asking is, hey database, here's a combination of username and password. Is it true or not? Database does not tell the app what the password is. Database does not tell the app what the password should be. So it's All so it's doing is it's answering yes or no. So the app here is requesting, is this correct combination to the database? Right? And database, the request comes in. Again, we have a firewall, which only accepts requests from these app servers. And then you can have rules inside the database on what's allowed. Like it will only respond to a request that says, hey, is this correct combination of password and user ID? Oh. So the answer is always yes or no. And that's all that that's the answer gets. Yes. That's it. That's it. Okay. So the request comes in here. So it's either gonna say yes or no to a request, right? And just so let's say, know, let's say yes. Wait, just you know, to ask, how does it send it back? Binary what? This is all done in binary. Everything is binary. Do you know binary? Yes, but we are not talking about binary. Okay. So let's, in, in this scenario, we say that Joe over here actually typed the right user ID and right password. So the database goes, yes, it is correct. Goes back, goes back to the app server. Says yes. App server goes, oh great, I like it. So it sends it back to the web server, saying, hey, whatever you provided me, I got the answer yes. Now you can display his news feed. Oh. So now web server takes this news feed, sends it out to the proxy, 
back to Joe's computer and you got your news feed. Well, technically, back to the internet. Back to the internet. That's where Joe is. Joe could be anywhere in that cloud. Now, let's say Joe is forgetful and he clicks on I forgot my email. Then what happens? <coughs> That is a whole different set of discussion. We're getting into programming. But this is overall uh, N tier architecture cool. that separates different layers that you have to go through to get to your data in a web environment. So you got proxy servers, you got web servers, you got application servers, and you got your database servers. Each protected with a firewall, firewall, firewall. So when App Services sends this happy yes back to Web Services. Does it run through the firewall backwards? Yes, it is running backwards at that point. We get into the topic of how the TCP IP stack works, but that's not what you're discussing today. Okay, so it does run through both firewalls yes. again. Yes, And this is extremely fast. This is nanoseconds. This whole process is you clicking the submit button on login page to the point you either get a wrong password or you get your news feed is instant. But in the back, all this happened. So, let's say they have a cloud web services, they have a cloud app services, and they have a cloud database. That would all be virtual, but it's the same thing. Yes, what happens in cloud computing is you still have all these zones. So this would be your database zone. This would be your app zone. And this would be your web zone. And you may or may not have a proxy zone or a reverse proxy. That's our lesson of NTR architecture. Thank you.